Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode, we will be talking about the Anthurium. It is also commonly called the flamingo flower due to the vibrant colours the flowers of this plant comes in. This belongs to the Araceae family to which the peace lily that almost has a striking resemblance to this plant belongs to. This is native to the Americas and is also widely distributed in the beautiful Caribbean islands. Most anthuriums are herbaceous epiphytes, meaning that it can grow on trees and barks with its aerial roots absorbing water and nutrients from the atmosphere and its surroundings without much help from the soil. Just like in the case of the peace lily, the inflorescence or the flower is this yellow tube-like thing called spadix that bears tiny nondescript flowers. To attract pollinators, the plant has these modified leaves called spathe that does the job of fooling these pollinators pretty well. They are heavily hybridized. The ones I have are these pink and yellowish green colored plants. You get this in different shades of red, pink, yellow, purple, etc. I hope to one day own all the varieties of this plant. The leaves of the plant are glossy just like the spathe. The plant is toxic if consumed, so keep this away from your pets and children. This plant can be propagated with the help of seeds and with the help of divisions of these pups. Now I will be repotting these two plants. For this, I have taken a container with holes at the bottom that is one size bigger than the existing container. Potting medium is something that will make or break this plant, so we must use a very well-draining potting mix that contains charcoal pieces, sand, soil, compost and some brick pieces or broken pot pieces. Additionally, you can use coco coir like this. Add the broken tile pieces at the bottom and add the potting mix and remove the plant carefully from the old pot and check the roots. If you see the plant is pot bound, then tease the roots a little. As you can see, these two plants have been grown in different potting mediums, one in a clay medium and the other in a much more well-draining potting medium, which includes some coco coir chips. Add the plant into the container and backfill with some more of the potting mix and I will be mulching it with some charcoal pieces at the end. Now add water till you see it flowing out of the container. Similarly, I will be repotting the other plant as well. If you are growing this outdoors, then give it some shade and protect it from direct sunlight and do not keep relocating this plant. Now let us look at the growing conditions of this plant quickly. Sunlight. This is an excellent indoor plant that can grow in low light conditions but lower the light, lower will be the flower production. So grow this near a window that faces the south or the west and if the light is too intense, then give it some shade with the help of sheer curtains. Do not put this under full sunlight because the leaves will burn and the plant will be stressed out. Next, watering. You must not overwater the plant. This will not tolerate damp soil at all and it might rot. If the leaves are turning yellow and the tips are burning like this, then it means that the plant has too much water. If the leaves are shriveled and wrinkled, then it must be getting less water. So always allow the soil to dry between every watering. You can do the finger test and see if the soil clings on to the finger, then don't water the plant. While watering, do not water the leaves, which might lead to unwanted fungal diseases. During winter, you can reduce watering. Humidity. Humidity is another important factor to grow successful anthuriums. So you can use a humidifier like this or simply grow this in your brightly lit bathrooms. Fertilizing. Fertilizing is very important in that you must remember not to over fertilize this plant. Over fertilizing will actually reduce the blooming in this plant. So I would suggest that you add compost to this once in two months. I would not recommend any other fertilizer for this plant specifically because this loves organic matter more than anything else. If your plant has enlarged yellow or brown leaves, then it must be getting too many nutrients. This plant, if given the right care conditions, will bloom throughout the year with the blooms lasting for more than a month or two. Another USB tip is that if the flowers are turning green, then it means that it's getting less sunlight. 
so move it to an area where you get ample indirect bright light. The plant can be affected by common pests like aphids, mealybugs, spider mites, etc. Use neem oil pesticide to get rid of these pests. Diseases include some bacterial or fungal diseases like blight which is a major problem. Again, neem oil pesticide along with baking soda can help with the control of these diseases. Pruning of dead leaves and blooms helps the plant produce more blooms and it also helps in keeping diseases at bay. But always do your pruning with a clean shear. This plant is part of NASA's best air purifying plant list, so be rest assured about the anthurium cleaning up your indoor space of noxious pollutants. So folks, if you look after your anthuriums well, they will bloom profusely and bring that shimmery, colourful happiness to your homes. So with this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. And if you like this video, then please like, share and subscribe. Also, do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links will be given below. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.